In today's video, I'll be talking about female fitness influencers. And I'll look at a case study about a young woman who destroyed her health by watching female fitness influencers. And I'll discuss a case study about a young woman who destroyed her health by watching these influencers. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kevin. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to speak with me on a free strategy call, there is a link in the box below. Remember, this video is for entertainment purposes only. Can we trust female fitness influencers? Let's take a look. The first video is by Maddie R. Fitness. Her video is five reasons you can't trust female fitness influencers. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the fact that all of these women have an incredibly low body fat percentage. I myself follow a lot of women on Instagram who have wanted to have a similar body to them. A good body fat percentage goal for women is about 20%. If you wanna have that athletic look, 20% is a reasonable target. Anything less is going to require a lot of energy. 20% for women is what 10% is for men. You don't need to go lower than that. If you wanna go lower than that, you can do that. Just understand it's going to come at a high price. You have to ask yourself, is it necessary and is it healthy? When I was orthorexic, I was as low as 5% body fat. I was not healthy. Lower is not always better. You don't wanna be 30%, but you also don't wanna be 15% either. Why do these influencers have a low body fat percentage? I don't know, maybe they put in the work or maybe they have genetics, which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes here. But realistically, these women have an incredibly low body fat percentage. But just because they have a low body fat percentage doesn't mean you should too. I think this is a photo of Nutty Food Fitness, one of my favorite grifters on YouTube. She was in my 10,000 calorie challenge video. It is really unrealistic and I would say irresponsible to show this flat stomach and this amazing body while holding a milkshake. If you think that you can drink milkshakes and have that kind of body, you are going to be surprised. If you wanna have that kind of body, you're going to have to sacrifice something. And I can guarantee you, you're not going to get that body by drinking milkshakes. Here's another thing, ladies, you don't need a six pack. You don't need abs. Here's what's really attractive, having some definition in your legs, some definition in your muscles, and a nice athletic build. Women who lift weights, who stay fit, they're attractive. But having six pack abs, uh -huh. I don't know about that. Six packs look better on men than they do women. If you wanna have that, great, it will turn heads, but it's definitely not necessary. You can have anything you want, just ask yourself, are you willing to pay the price? And is it even worth it? Unless you're being paid to have six pack abs as a woman, don't do it. Number two, we all have different genetics and people aren't talking about this enough. If I it could be genetics, but who knows? Just because her mom is in good shape doesn't mean that's why she's in good shape. I think angles and filters explain a lot more of this. You can't change your genetics. You were given these genetics, you had no say in the matter. Just do the best that you can and don't try to explain your behavior by looking at your genetics. The thing is, there's an entire science called epigenetics, and that's the role that the environment plays on your genetics. And your environment and even your behavior can turn on or off certain proteins in your DNA. I'm not the expert on this, there's a lot about that that I don't know, but that is an entire field of study. My point is, genetics is not destiny. Don't blame your genetics for anything. And if somebody's doing better than you, don't say, oh, it's because of their genetics. This can become an easy cop-out. The amount she eats, is a lot for someone that's that small. Or could it be that influencers like Nutty Food Fitness don't actually eat what they're eating? The same way that Chloe Ting doesn't finish her meals on her videos. Greg Doucette made a video about this. He claimed that Nutty Food Fitness wasn't really swallowing what she was eating. I can't make any claims. I don't know if she's swallowing it or not, but it would be very easy to fake a 10,000 calorie challenge. It would be easy to say that you're eating all of this when you're only eating like one or two bites in the background. Just beware, YouTube is curated content and this is one of the problems. We don't see everything. If you think you can have a flat stomach and ripped abs and this amazing body and still eat milkshakes, you are in for a rude awakening. Number three, these healthy lifestyles they have often aren't healthy. If you look at a lot of fitness influencers, so many have openly said that they've had eating disorders in the past. Isn't it interesting that a lot of these popular influencers have had EDs in the past? 
Now, I've admitted that I've had EDs. I mean, that's what this whole channel is about, right? It's about how do we overcome that? That's no secret for me. But when you look at really popular influencers, a lot of them have had EDs. And here's the question, how many of them still have EDs? In order to reach that level of fitness, was an ED a necessary part of that process? What are your bets that a lot of fitness influencers don't even talk about the fact that they have one? They want to be relatable. They want people to watch their videos and think. I would hate to think that having an ED was a necessary part of that process, that they traded their sanity and their health just to have this body. A lot of people have great bodies and are in great shape and they've never had an ED. So we should make that clear. But it is kind of disturbing when you see all of these videos from popular influencers admitting that they've had an ED in the past. And how many of them still struggle with long-term effects of these EDs? How many of them are in quasi-recovery? We don't know. Number four, their aim is to sell you products. So that's how they make their money. So I don't think money is necessarily the only reason they do it. I think a lot of it is like attention. They like the, the status that comes with it and making videos is fun. I think most of these influencers genuinely like fitness, but it's not hard to believe that some of them still have a lot of issues that they have not dealt with. And yes, they sell courses. I mean, I sell my course and they sell other products and other services. Nothing wrong with that, but I sure hope that they are living a healthy and fit lifestyle. Buyer beware. Don't buy products just because the influencer is popular or because she has a great body. Buy it because she has a proven track record. Buy it because you really think that her service is going to benefit you. They will work, but not in the time span that they say it will. I mean, you can see this in most YouTube videos. The thumbnail will say, get abs in two weeks. And it doesn't work like that. You can't achieve those things in such a small amount of time. They promise, this is my biggest complaint about fitness influencers, male and female, is that they over promise. They over promise what they can actually deliver. You can't get six pack abs in two weeks or two months, maybe two years, but two months is unrealistic. I don't make unrealistic claims or promises about my course. My course and my philosophy is not for everybody. And not everybody who works with me necessarily gets the result that they want. It's kind of like being a lawyer. Not all of your clients are going to win in court. You do the best you can. You serve your clients as best as you can. You guide them. You provide them instructions. You have to try different approaches sometimes. But even then, that's not enough to get the result. It is what it is. Changing behavior, changing the brain, it's hard work. Even when you're talking about fitness, which is psychological and physiological, it's still hard to make promises about what you can achieve with your client. But I know that promising your client a better body in two weeks is totally unrealistic. You have to play the long game here. Whether you're recovering from an ED or you're building a better body or you're losing weight, building a business, you have to think like an investor. You have to think long term. My advice is don't click any video that makes a ridiculous claim like that. How to get abs in the next month. How to lose 10 pounds in a month. Stop clicking it. If you stop clicking it, they will get the message. One habit that I made in the last year is I don't click clickbait. If it looks like clickbait and if it sounds unrealistic, I don't click it. Editing and angles can make the world of difference. These female fitness influencers will put their ass at the front of the picture so it looks bigger. And then finally, the editing and the angles. I mentioned Stephanie Lang's channel. Go check out her channel. I'll put a link in the description box. But she has tons and tons of videos about this. And I think she has an Instagram account too. Comparing reality with what you see on Instagram. It's not hard to fake anymore. Now let's look at our case study. This is from Natalia Seliger. My journey, binging diet culture, eating intuitively and finding balance. She was a victim, I guess, of these female fitness influencers watching all of their videos. And what did it do? It didn't make her healthy. In fact, it actually damaged her health. She ended up developing a horrible case of orthorexia and then she started binge eating and it created this entire mess. Let's see what she has to say. My worth is not my body. Let's talk about this. My worth is not my body. 
This is something that I think a lot of women do. They confuse self-worth with sexual attraction. And those two things are completely different. Just because you're not sexually attractive doesn't mean you're not worthy. Of course you're worthy. You have other roles in life. Maybe you're a mother, you're a sister, a daughter, you are an employee, you're a coworker, you're a classmate. You play a lot of different roles in your life. Just because you're out of shape, just because you're not sexually attractive, just because you don't have that like bikini body at the beach or whatever, doesn't mean that you have no worth. And I think this is a temptation for a lot of young women. They think their sexual attraction is everything. So when high school came around, I did cross country my freshman and sophomore year. Endurance sports like cross country are definitely a risk factor. The rate of EDs in endurance sports is probably much higher than the general population. That's just my guess. I don't have any data on that but why wouldn't it be? You learn very soon that the less you weigh, the faster you go to a point. These young adults, they start these sports like, in, like cross country or wrestling and nobody tells them about the risk of developing an ED. And then when they do, it's like, where do they go? They need to be warned before they start. I gained the relationship 20, if you know, you know. What is a relationship 20? Like you get into a relationship and then you gain weight? Like, I, I don't get that. Can you explain that to me? Put it in the comments below. No wonder why he broke up with me. Like I'm so heavy now. She thinks she lost a relationship because she was heavy. We don't know that. But let's face it, the dating market is cruel. It's visual. When you're on a dating app, you look at somebody, are they attractive or are they not? This is especially true for men because we are so visual. If we don't like what we see, we just move on. And I think she learned that very early. That if she was in good shape, she got attention. If she was not in shape, she lost relationships and she didn't get attention. And I made this point in my unpopular opinions video that sexual attraction and sexual desire are interlinked with EDs. You can't separate the two. And a lot of times that desire to increase your sexual attraction can end horribly wrong, like in this case. I told myself I was gonna do anything and everything I could to lose weight as quickly as possible. And the temptation is always to lose weight as fast as possible. Again, she's not thinking long-term, but nobody does when you're 19, 20 years old. I mean, she looks pretty young. I don't know how old she is in this video, 22, 23. And this was several years ago, but you want everything now. I hate to say it, but it's childish thinking. I want it now, now, now. You have to start thinking ahead. If I want to lose 30 pounds, it's probably going to take me nine to 12 months. Losing weight fast is a serious risk factor for developing an ED. Nobody says I'm going to lose half a pound a week. Everybody wants to lose half a pound a day. It's the microwave culture. We expect a gourmet meal in three minutes calorie counting in my fitness pal and checking the scale typical behaviors are calorie counting in my fitness pal don't demonize my fitness pal my fitness pal is there to help you but if you use it irresponsibly it's on you if it becomes an obsession it's on you it's just the way to track your fitness and to track your intake that's all it is if you use it appropriately it can help you achieve your goals all of that. I thought I was doing the right thing. Nobody ever thinks they're doing the wrong thing. Like when I went that direction, I thought I was just being healthy. I just want to be fit and be strong. I wasn't being honest with myself. I don't think she was being honest with herself. I think she knew what she was doing. What happens is the abnormal becomes the normal, if that makes sense. You're just in this different world and you're ignoring the obvious signs, even though it's so obvious what's going on. She was not paying attention to the obvious signs. She thought she was doing the right thing. It was obvious to everybody except her. Our capacity to deceive ourselves is incredible sometimes. It wasn't a healthy mindset to have by following these, these certain people. I'm not gonna say who it was. Um... Yes, following these influencers is toxic. They, have unreal, they create unrealistic expectations. They don't show you what they don't wanna show you. They don't tell you how they got to that place. They don't tell you about the advantages they had. They don't tell you about their past history. They only show you what they want you to see. And this can have a horrible effect on your physical and your mental health. Sometimes I think we would all be healthier if we just turned off social media sometimes. But it's here to stay, and people like me are here to clean up the mess. Fuel. I never let myself have sweets. I never let myself 
indulge in something that would satisfy my craving. Like Never having sweets, that's not necessarily a sign that you have an ED. I don't eat a lot of sweets either because I don't want that in my body. If you're really committed to a goal, if you're committed to a weight loss goal, not having sweets is probably going to be an advantage. All you're doing when you don't eat sweets is you're sacrificing a few moments of pleasure. That's it, it's not a big deal. The problem is cutting too many calories too fast in entire food groups. That's why Natalia found herself having half a banana with some peanut butter on it. I'm surprised she even had the peanut butter. I stopped eating out because I was scared of calories and portion sizes I had no control over. Skipping social events is a problem. That is a red flag. I have skipped so many social events. Anybody who's ever had an ED has skipped social events. Later in the video, she said that she skipped a wedding because she was too afraid of the food, like what, the birthday cake? The wedding food isn't that great anyway, so it had to be the cake. But if you see somebody doing that and they're skipping events or not eating at events, that is a red flag. The compliments, I hear this on every ED story video. I got compliments and I liked the compliments and it validated what I was doing, so I kept doing it. This is why you should not compliment somebody when they are losing weight. Another person's weight is none of your business. Focus on your weight, focus on your health. Don't compliment people when they lose weight. You don't know what's happening in the background and you don't know what methods they use to achieve that. Is when I would just go ham in the kitchen and eat till no tomorrow and feel so overly full. And eventually this severe case of orthorexia ended up in vent, as it always does. How long can you hold your breath? How long can you starve yourself? eventually your body rebels. And this is what happens to a lot of anorexics. They just starve themselves, starve themselves, and then everything erupts. In some ways that's a good thing because they need those calories, but now they have another problem. How do you stop binge eating? And then that becomes its own monster. Her story is just, it's so familiar. I wanted to lose weight, I wanted to be healthy, I wanted to be more attractive, so I tried to lose as much weight as possible, and I cut all my calories, then I got the compliments, then I started skipping social events, then my body rebelled. It's so familiar, it's almost like a script in your brain. Because I was like stuck in this cycle of like restricting, then binging, and... Here's the thing about the cycle, it's easy to start, it's hard to stop. It's like joining the mafia. Once you're in, you're in, and it's almost impossible to get out. Fortunately, there is a way to stop this cycle, but it's not easy and you're not gonna change it in one day. I would watch like mukbangs and like calorie challenges. Oh gosh, the worst thing she could have done was to watch mukbang and calorie counting videos or those calorie challenges. I've made a video about that before. They're stupid, they don't teach us anything. It's gross entertainment. It's almost as bad as that old MTV show, Ridiculous. I don't know if they're still making episodes. It is junk food for your mind. These 10,000 calorie challenges, they serve absolutely zero purpose. They don't teach us anything. We don't learn anything. There are no lessons. And yet hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people continue to click these videos. Stop clicking those videos. Um, I would watch like Stephanie Buttermore and her calorie challenge videos and... Stephanie Buttermore, who knew? I'm not surprised. It's almost like every time I watch a video about this, like how somebody wrecked their health, Stephanie Buttermore always comes up. I've made a video about her because she has had such a huge influence on young females. Because she like would eat whatever she wanted and she'd eat all these things and still look the way she did and I wanted that so badly. She sends this false message. I can have all of this delicious food and still have this amazing body and this boyfriend and this amazing life and all this influence. It's a very seductive message. That's exactly what I said about All In. When I made that All In video, what did I say? I said this series is popular because it promises two contradictory things. Eat all of this delicious food and still look amazing. And the thing is when you're 20, 21 years old, you don't know how to vet people. You don't know how to vet your guru. You don't have filters. You don't know how to properly evaluate information or incorporate information. You don't understand habits. You don't know how to progress properly. You don't know how to make changes. You don't know any of that. Nobody teaches that to you. And it's not a skill that comes programmed into your brain. 
She saw somebody she liked, she saw these videos, and she tried to do the same thing. I didn't realize that it was like an eating disorder. I didn't realize that. No, nobody ever realizes it's an ED. That's the thing. Like you start to live in your own world and you ignore the signs. I think she was so committed to this weight loss goal that she didn't want to hear anything else. She didn't want to see the obvious signs. She didn't want somebody else to tell her, this is a problem and you need to fix this. You taught me what intuitive eating was. I have my complaints about intuitive eating, but here's the thing. It's not just eating when you're hungry and stopping when you're full. If you think that's what intuitive eating is, I think you should go read the book again. For help, it's okay to not be okay. Like This might be the best line of the whole video. It's okay not to be okay. And maybe she wasn't okay with being not okay, if that makes sense. It's okay to say that your life kind of sucks, that you have a problem, that you're not feeling well. One pernicious effect of social media is that it creates this idea that our lives are always good. Like you don't put the crappy moments on your Instagram feed. You don't show people the boring moments of your day. You don't show people how mundane your life is. You don't show people the times that you cry. You don't show, you don't tell people about your anxiety. You don't air out your dirty laundry. You only show the best parts, you know, family photos and weddings and these amazing trips that you're taking. You can't blame the social media companies, but this is just an inevitable behavior. It's just the nature of social media. We only want to show the best of our lives. Keep this in mind when you're watching fitness influencers, male or female, you're only seeing the best. You don't see the suck. You don't see the crappy moments of their lives. You're only seeing the tip top of their lives. The fact is, most of their life is probably really boring and mundane. I mean, mine is. I'll be upfront about that. My life isn't super amazing. I don't have all of these amazing peak experiences every day. Making this video and scripting it and editing it and seeing patients and writing notes, there's nothing fun or exciting about any of that. That's just how life is. It's not always fun and games. I would be lying if I said I don't still struggle every now and then with eating disordered thoughts. They still creep in every now and then. I'm also glad that she admitted this too, that she still struggles with ED thoughts. A lot of people who have recovered, who don't have episodes anymore, they still have those thoughts. I call these the long-term effects or the residual effects of ED. So you can be recovered and still have some of these thoughts. It takes a while for them to go away and you can't snap your fingers and say, go away. It's not like you can exercise, you know, these demons and these thoughts out of your body. I still get cravings. I still get urges sometimes. I still get messages in my brain to say, eat that, do that, go read the news. I still get the temptation to procrastinate. Like I still have my own challenges. I'm not perfect here. And I still have, and I have mental health challenges too. And that's something else you need to understand. Even after you recover, you will still have mental health problems. Mental health is becoming one of the biggest problems of the 21st century. So shout out to all the mental health practitioners, therapists, counselors, and coaches out there. We need you guys. I hope you found this video educational and entertaining. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to speak with me on a free strategy call, there is a link in the box below. I'll put links to all of these videos in the description box. If you liked this video, I'm sure you'll like one of the other videos that you see on the screen. Click one of them and I'll see you there. And as always, eat the way you're designed to.